Welcome to the first class here on Newtography TV. I'm Andrew Newland, and today we're going to go over the DSLR basics. We'll be covering things like what not to do with your camera, super basics, and the exposure triangle. So, break out your pen and paper, and let's get to learning, Bill. Town. Okay, so we have a lot to go over today, so get ready because we're going to start with the super basics. So you bought a camera and you're ready to start taking pictures, but maybe you're a little intimidated by this giant machine that has more than one little button. Don't worry, we've all been there. But just like anything else in life, if we break photography down into the basics and understand what causes change, then we're on our way to making incredible images. Okay, so here's how we break down DSLR photography. There are three fundamental parts, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. These three things come together and they make what's known as the exposure triangle. This is the in-camera balancing act that determines the proper brightness or exposure of your images. And once you master this balancing act, you enable yourself to be much better and more creative with your photography. Okay, so the exposure triangle is broken down like this. First. We have the aperture, which is physically related to the lens and the amount of light that is let into your camera. Second is shutter speed, which controls the duration of the curtain or shutter in front of your sensor being open. And third is the ISO. The ISO is basically your in-camera sensor's sensitivity to light. Now, each of these three elements have independent side effects. And the trick is to learn how to balance these three side effects so you can make creative and well-exposed images. Okay, so the way an image is captured is the light passes through your aperture or lens, past the shutter, and is collected on your image sensor. So, let's start in the front of the camera with the aperture. The aperture is controlled by the opening and closing of multiple blades inside the aperture ring of your lens. Each step up or down is what's known as an f-stop, and it's represented by the f number on your camera's digital display. I like to think of the lens as the eye of the camera. And just like in the human eye, how the iris gets small when it's really bright to let less light in, and when it's dark, it gets bigger to let more light in. The same principle applies to the aperture. The larger the aperture, or the lower the f-stop, the more light is coming through your lens and into your camera. And the smaller the aperture, or the larger the f-stop, the less light is coming in. So, the higher the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture is and the lower the f-stop number, the larger the aperture is. So f1.8 would be really large, and f22 would be really small. Now the side effect of aperture is what's known as depth of field. I'm sure we've all seen this in one way or another. It's the way professional portraits or sports photography puts the subject in crystal clear focus, but throws everything else out of focus and has that blurry, dreamy effect on the background. So how depth of field works is that the lower your f-stop or the larger your aperture, the more shallow your depth of field becomes. This means at f1.8, you only have a tiny sliver of your subject completely sharp and in focus. This allows you to creatively blur the background of your image. And likewise, the smaller the aperture or the higher the f-stop, then the greater the depth of field becomes to the point where everything in your entire image can be in focus. This is good for landscapes, so you would have everything in your entire landscape in focus with a higher F number, like F16 or F20. All right, now, let's move a little further into the camera to the shutter speed. Inside your camera, there's a curtain that opens and closes, which is known as the shutter. And the shutter speed controls the length of time that the shutter remains open, allowing all that light and information through your aperture and past your shutter onto your camera's sensor. Think of the shutter as the camera's eyelid. However, this eyelid remains closed at all times until you press that magic little picture-taking button. 
then the shutter opens for a specific amount of time to let the light into the camera. Now the shutter speed is represented by a number on your digital display that is usually shown as a fraction. This fraction is actually the fractions of a second that the shutter is opening and closing. What this essentially does is help you freeze action. If you set your shutter speed to 1 500th of a second, then the only thing that's recorded to your sensor is that small sliver of time that that shutter opens. This is really good for sports photography because you want to freeze the action. Bring the action. I want to scream and shout and let it all out and scream and shout and let it out. We say it no. So, by having a high shutter speed, you can create nice, crisp action shots. Now, can you guess what happens when you slow that shutter speed down? That's where what's called motion blur comes into play. And this is the side effect of the shutter speed. So if you had something moving really fast and you were only using a 1 60th of a second, then you're gonna get motion blur, and if you were trying to capture that, it's not gonna work very well. However, if you use motion blur to your advantage, this allows you to get really creative by adding that feeling of speed to your images. You can also get creative by doing what's called long exposures. In a long exposure, say you set your shutter to open for one second. All of the light that is happening in front of your camera is being recorded on your sensor for that one second. You can utilize this in several creative ways, like nighttime landscapes or star trails, as well as painting with light. All of these things we'll go over in another video. Now to the ISO. ISO is simply your image sensor's sensitivity to light. Think of it like this. Have you ever been late getting to a movie and it's really difficult to see in the dark movie theater once the movie has started? You have to wait for your eyes to adjust and become more sensitive before you can walk around and find a seat. Then. After the movie's over, when you walk outside, it's like the sun missed you and it tries to give you this really bright hug and it blinds you until your eyes adjust to the brightness. Well, ISO is kind of like that. When you raise your ISO, you're raising the image sensor's sensitivity to light. So if you're at 200 ISO, then your image sensor's not all that sensitive, which is good in the middle of a bright sunny day, but it wouldn't be very good if you're trying to take an image in the dark. But if you're at ISO 5000, then it's very sensitive. And if you try to take a picture in a bright sunny day, then your image is gonna be way overexposed. But it becomes very easy to take a picture in a dark setting. Now, ISO has a very negative side effect as it is directly correlated to your image's quality. As you raise your ISO, you start to introduce what's called noise into your image. So, at a low ISO, your image is at its optimum quality. But when you start getting into higher ISOs, you start adding noise and losing detail, thus sacrificing image quality. So these are the three basic elements of photography that make up the exposure triangle. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. These are all different ways of making your image brighter or darker with different side effects for each variable. ISO has noise, aperture has depth of field, and shutter speed has blur. Now if you haven't figured it out yet, the trick is to master the give and take between these three elements. What I suggest is that you walk into different lighting environments with your camera in manual mode and you try and guess the settings and see if you can get it right within a few shots. You'll be surprised how quickly you get good at this. And in turn, you'll be able to take control of your environment and be confident to shoot in any scenario. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the different camera modes and when and where you should be using each one. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to keep up with Newtography TV. Coming up in October, we're gonna be giving away our first prize. Also, if you'd like an ebook so you can read along and go further in depth into this basics of photography, click the link in the description box and head on over to newtography.com. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope I did good on my first video. Um, this is the same stuff that you'd go to your local camera shop and pay to learn. And it's all free! I know you like free. Free is pretty great. Um, but it leaves me broke. So thanks for watching. Love you, bye. And set. All right, and we're live here at the Raymondville State Park Econo Lodge. This video is now available on Sega Genesis. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Can't. Go down, pinky. Meh.
shutter shutter speed, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. If we break photography down, if we break, if we take off your blindfold and listen to what I'm saying. If you shit, if you shit, say you opened your you set your say you set your shutter to open. Say you set your shutter. Say you set your shutter. Say you set your shutter, say you set your shutter to open. Say you set. Say you set your shutter to open. Say you set. All right. How's the audio? Do I sound fat? And and the end is an F stop. And it's con and it depth of field is. Hello. Oh hi. You press one for English. I have shaved. I look like an unsponsored professional skateboarder. And the exposure triangle. <laughs> it's a triangle, see? And the exposure triangle. I'm Andrew Do <clears throat> Who am I? Who am I? Who? Yeah, and George Washington can't cut down that beanstalk. What? What? <sighs> Which is physically related to the lens. Which is physically related to the lens. Which is physically related to the lens and the amount of light that let. Blah, blah, blah. What does that smell? Oh, it's a potato pancake. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. So, break out your pen, your pen and paper. So, break out, so, break out your pen and paper and let's get to learning, Bill Town.